Hi everyone, this is Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. I hope you guys liked my last video on causes of acne, different types of acne. Today we're gonna focus on acne treatment, which I hope you enjoy. Thank you. One of my specialties as a board certified dermatologist i am treating acne every day multiple patients uh, a day and they range from young teenagers or even adolescents from age nine years and up to you know 65 year olds with acne rosacea so there's a big range of patients who are plagued by acne so whether it's superficial inflammatory acne comedonal acne or nodular cystic acne there are treatments for any one of those, or if you have a combination, we can definitely tailor your treatments to you in the office. At the end of the video, we'll talk about over-the-counter options that you can get at the drugstore at an affordable price. So when you come to visit us in the office, we'll first evaluate what kind of acne you have, how severe is your acne, and what parts of the face is it affecting. If it's just superficial, very localized acne, that's on the face and it's not severe, it's not even moderate, it's just mild, we will probably just stick with a topical regimen. That can be a topical antibiotic or my favorite, retinoid. And retinoids we talked about in other videos, but there are a range of retinoids that you can be prescribed or you can find over the counter and that's more retinol or retinil. Next category of moderate acne, meaning you're having a little juicier, bigger lesions, more diffuse uh, areas of involvement, even including the chest, the back, the shoulders. Those are harder areas to treat with just creams and you might need an oral antibiotic or an oral medicine called uh, isotretinoin. If you're a female and I'm suspecting that you're having hormonal acne along the jawline or the U-shaped distribution of the face, I will talk to you about potentially putting you on a birth control pill or spironolactone. So why do we give birth control pills and spironolactone? Birth control pills and spironolactone, actually they work synergistically together. Birth control or oral contraceptive pills decrease the production of androgen hormones like testosterone. Also, spironolactone will prevent those androgen hormones from binding to the lower half of your face, causing the, uh, the acne lesions or even cystic lesions on your jawline. So I give those quite a bit together. Also, you don't wanna take spironolactone without some form of birth control because it is not safe to use during pregnancy. Next, if you're having nodular cystic acne or severe acne that's scarring your face or, and or your body, uh, we will talk about isotretinoin or Accutane and I will do a separate video just on Accutane. For isotretinoin though, you want to have a parent present if you're a minor because I will need written consent before starting you on this medication. If you're a female of reproductive age, you will have to wait one month before starting the medicine because we need two pregnancy tests one month apart before starting you on it. And we have to confirm that you're definitely not pregnant before starting it because a big no-no is you don't want to get pregnant while on this medication. It's a vitamin A medication, but it is too much vitamin A for a fetus. Hey doc, how do I treat my scarring, my acne scarring? And first of all, when, before answering that, I have to look and see, is your acne under control? Because if your acne is not under control, why do we treat your scarring, okay? We have to tr make sure the source or the acne is no longer active before treating the scarring. Because if we keep chasing the scarring, you're gonna keep making new acne lesions and then we're gonna be chasing our tail there. So the thing that we could consider for scarring besides retinoid pain would be chemical peels, and we do that in our office. Chemical peels are great. I love doing chemical peels on myself and for my patients because it's so easy. The downtime is minimal. I call it a lunchtime peel because I can get it done at lunch and still see 20 patients in the afternoon without feeling self-conscious. All right, so um, chemical peels are different types of peels. We go for superficial to medium strength uh, or superficial to medium in depth uh, peels. 
And we go with the SkinCeuticals line. We do Micro Peel 30 Plus and the Advanced Corrective Peel. Both have different acids in it. We like to target your acne, your acne scarring, your fine wrinkles, your pores. Uh, we can also add some little tightening effect along the jawline with salicylic acid, a little bit of glycolic acid, lactic acid, resorcinol. Those are really nice ingredients to have in your peel, but we wanna help make the acne scars become less apparent. We're gonna be peeling off at a microscopic level your dead layer skin called the stratum corneum, and we're gonna try and stimulate collagen from below to thicken up your skin, kind of like what a retinoid would do. So chemical peels, I love to do quite a bit. I try to fit in three to four peels a year just for myself. I wish I could do more. And when you come to our office to get the chemical peel done, I will do it for you. I have a board certified dermatologist performing the procedure for you. Things to expect afterward is, would be to have a little pink or a little redness after the peel, like you're out in the sun for a bit. And then the next following days, you may peel. Some people don't peel, but if you do peel, it's more of a dry look to your face, like you're having a little dryness around your mouth that will peel around the cheekbones, kind of like when you first start a retinoid. You know, the other thing you could consider for scar treatments would be laser. Lasers are very expensive. They um, don't work 100%. You, you may not eradicate your scars to the point where you want them. So, um, and you also would need sequential treatments with a laser to get to where you want to be most likely. So you want to see a dermatologist who's very experienced with lasers for that. Now let's go to the fun part, the over-the-counter medications that you guys uh, probably wanted to learn about today. Uh, so thank you for watching up to this point. And uh, in terms of over-the-counter options, you want to find a cleanser that has a harmonious relationship with your skin because you want to use it on a regular basis. So if you have oily skin, I usually recommend benzoyl peroxide 5% or salicylic acid, um, Neutrogena salicylic acid wash. So benzoyl peroxide comes in different concentrations. I like between five to 10%. Clean and Clear is a really nice brand. Panoxo is a nice brand. A lot of patients do prefer to stick with the 5% benzoyl peroxide, which is fine. Salicylic acid, the one I like to use here is 2% salicylic acid. So those are great options as a daily cleanser. I wouldn't do it twice a day because it will dry you out. Um, the other, you would alternate this with another cleanser that's gentle, say Cetaphil, it makes a nice cleanser. They have a nice creamy lotion type of cleanser, but I also like this foam one because I have tend to have oily skin as well. So um, this, this is a really nice one for acne prone skin and it's very gentle. So you could alternate this and this very easily. The other gentle wash that I like that has hyaluronic acid and ceramides would be La Roche-Posay's foaming wash. This purifying foaming wash is very nice. And if you're very sensitive, you can't go wrong with Free and Clear. This is such a nice brand for people with sensitive skin. If you're allergic to a lot of the things and other uh, products, the inactive ingredients might irritate your skin. This is so nice. So I like this one a lot for days where I feel like my skin's extra sensitive with the cold weather in Seattle. But a lot of topical medicines you cannot use while pregnant. So please mention to your dermatologist if you are pregnant because there are many topicals that I would not prescribe uh, a woman who is pregnant. Okay, so the over-the-counter options you have besides cleansers would be to uh, consider Differin Gel, which I mentioned before was recently switched from a prescription medicine to an over-the-counter option that you can purchase. Look at the, uh, if you look at the box that it comes in or the, the container it comes in, it looks quite a bit like Rogaine. So make sure you're not buying Rogaine uh, when you go to the store. I'm sure it's in a different aisle, but it's funny how it, they look very similar. Different gel is a Dapolene 0.1%. It's a nice gel that you could use, whereas trying to keep your pores small, clean, helps with um, preventing acne. So that's a nice start. But if that doesn't work, definitely see me. So when, if you ask me, hey doc, does that really work? I, it's hard for me to say because all the people who come to see me for help, that medicine did not work, right? It didn't work for them. So they come, they end up seeing me. But I'm sure it does help. It is well tolerated, but when you have increased tolerance, uh, I do worry about, is it actually doing anything for your skin? The other thing, if you're having acne and you're not having, uh, if you're just having the occasional breakout, you could consider a spot treat, uh, a spot treatment, and there are different spot treatments out there. I like the benzoyl peroxide leave-on. 
they do have a little sting to it. So you know it's really getting absorbed into your acne. It does dry it out quite a bit and it's antibacterial, the benzoyl peroxide. So the one I use is this Effaclort Duo it is very nice for spot treatment, but I do not recommend that to your entire face. Okay, just a quick recap. We have here the salicylic acid wash, or you could do a benzoyl peroxide wash once a day. The other day, time of the day, you wanna stick with something that's gentle. So these are my favorite gentle cleansers, Cetaphil, Neutrogena, it's Hydro Boost, or Free and Clear Liquid Cleanser. Moving on, these are the prescription medicines that you could consider, and um, Adapalene. Here we talked about it. There is a over-the-counter option for you, 0.1%. But if that doesn't work or if your acne is flaring and getting worse, you want to come and see me soon and not wait on it. Moving on down, the Amzeek uh, is a topical foam that just came out. And then these are other prescription medicines that we can talk about when you see me in the clinic. What I forgot to mention would be what moisturizers are fine to use because sometimes I do recommend having a moisturizer uh, to apply before putting on a retinoid, especially for people with sensitive skin or if you're first starting off, what's a good moisturizer for acne prone skin? You wanna look for things with niacinamide in it, like Elta MD will have this barrier renewal complex or uh, CeraVe moisturizing lotion PM is really nice. That has niacinamide in it. And niacinamide is something that's anti-inflammatory and will help with your acne. All right, so I hope this video was helpful and I hope you learned a lot about acne these past few videos. And I really enjoy talking about acne. It's one of my, the best parts of my day is when I see my patients getting better with treatment. And please be responsible with your over-the-counter medicines. Uh, putting too much on your face is not good. You know, over drying your face with too many cleansers with acids in them uh, can dry you out and will incre and and when you have a dry face, you will, you will stimulate your oil glands to make more oil and it could trap more sebum. So you're actually gonna do more harm than good when you overdo things like over cleansing, putting on too many different topical medicines or leave on treatments. Uh, it could cause inflammation and traumatize the skin. If you're having acne that's progressing quickly and is causing scarring, definitely come and make an appointment with a dermatologist because you might need something more than just a topical medicine, all right? So again, this video does not replace a visit with your dermatologist. It's just a broad overview over treatment options and, over th and things over the counter that you could consider as a base. And whenever you see your dermatologist, please bring in a list of medications or over the counter treatments you have tried in the past. That will be very much appreciated no matter which doctor you go to. Having a list of specific names, even dates of how long you've been on them. Please take care. I hope you have nice, clear skin. Um, but if you don't, you know who to see and, um, please like this video, please subscribe to my channel and see you for the next video. Peace. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you next time.